Here we go. Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to another Q and A for the uh, SF Indie, Fe Indie Shorts Festival 2021. This Q and A is about uh, a program of shorts that kind of relate to the stories of immigrants. Uh, we're very fortunate, very lucky to have all these wonderful filmmakers here with us. Uh, my name is Jason Wolos. I am the Shorts Fest programmer. Uh, and first off, hey filmmakers, thanks for being here uh, from many different places around the world. And also congratulations for getting in the festival. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Having us. <laughs> uh, so um, maybe first let's just do a icebreaker introduction. If you go around the room, the grid, I'll call you out. Um, maybe state your name, your role on the film, because sometimes we have different positions uh, representing the films. And uh, the title of the film, even though we just watched your movies, and also maybe the uh, the brief uh, synopsis, not a long version just yet of your film, but you know the elevator pitch, the short synopsis of your film for the people watching, maybe for the first time. Uh, and uh, if I mess up your name, please correct me. Uh, so uh, Newman, is that you? Is that correct? Uh, it's it's Naman. Naman, I knew I'd do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Give my American uh, English. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Iman, uh, would you begin, please? <clears throat> right. Okay. Uh, so my film's uh, One Way Glass, and I'm the director of the film. Uh, it's my debut film, um, and uh, it's it's basically about an immigrant girl, a uh, Pakistani uh, Muslim immigrant uh, to the UK, uh, who finds herself in difficult circumstances. Uh, she's married to a person who. Uh, uh, is unemployed, is, is, uh, does not take any interest in her uh, uh, for a reason uh, that they dis, uh, discover later. And, uh, uh, and she um, is, is uh, uh, sort of forced into um, working um, uh, at, at, at a place uh, at night, uh, which uh, would ordinarily be uh, uh, just outlandish, you know, for a Muslim girl, you know, uh, it's, it's a bizarre situation and it's, it's something uh, that, um, um, you know, you, you uh, would never think of, but uh, is made possible by the writer of the film, uh, uh, because anything's uh, possible in, in the realms of the imagination, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, so that basically uh, is uh, the story of the film. I wouldn't want to tell you any more about it, you know. Um, yeah, uh, it would spoil have to see it for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, next, I'll go to Vergi. Am I saying that correctly? It's Vergi. Vergi. I'm going to mess all your names up. Uh, sorry, but except for Joe's, I'll get Joe's right. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, so, hi, Virgie. my name is, is uh, Vergi Rodriguez. I'm the writer, the director, and I acted in uh, a short film called Dreamer. Dreamer is about um, a medical volunteer resident who travels to Venezuela on a, on a mission, on a medical mission. And on her way back in, she meets a TSA agent that isn't so welcoming. So uh, it surrounds the plight of DACA recipients and Dreamers in this country at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, not to give too much away either. I'll leave it there. Right on, thank you very much. Uh, and then, um, I just feel bad calling out names here. Uh, Roll. Roll? Yes, it's me. Yeah. Oh, oh you can pronounce it pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, could you say it for me correctly? Roll. Roll. Thank you, sir. Rool. Yeah. My last name it will, be, it will be a little bit more difficult, I think, for you. It's Schwierenha. Uh, <laughs> but I will not bore you with that. I, I will need some practice. Yes, forgive me. Yeah, uh, no, no problem. Um, yeah, I'm the director of the, the short film uh, Pushback. Uh, it's a, a mini documentary. It's it's only about three minutes, and um, and I made that because of the uh, the current immigrant uh, crisis. Uh, it's not just in Europe; it's all over the world. But in in Euro Europe at the moment, uh, it's really a, a humanitarian tragedy that uh, both refugees that are trying to reach uh, Greece, the islands, safe land where. Um, United Nations refugee camps are located. Uh, they are actually being stopped at open waters at sea and being pushed back by uh, coastal guards. And not in a friendly way, they are shooting sharp 
and uh, they're shooting to, uh, to um, uh, destroy the boats uh, in the middle of sea. So you, you know what will happen next. Uh, most of them will be left to die in open seas. Uh, it's, it's a very tragic uh, situation. Uh, it's, it's a disgrace of, of Europe, I would say. It's a disgrace of, of humanity and history. Um, I, I don't say that I have an, an, a solution for the immigration crisis because it's a hugely complex theme. Um, but the way how we deal with this and that we all know about it and see it and nobody's doing anything about it, that made me eager to, uh, to do this. And um, I was brought up to this topic um, by a friend of mine who asked me to um, give a very brief uh, interview and film that about a uh, humanitarian initiative in the Netherlands. It's called, called the- But Camp don't go on Ora. too far, because uh, I'll be asking some of these questions that relate to your yeah, answers sure. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, and then next, uh, Lan or Lan? Lan. Lan, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Lan Zhong. So I'm the actress in our film, Home Free. Uh, we shot it last year. And this film is basically about this Chinese girl. She studied in America and then she decided to stay and then pursue a legal way to stay. Uh, it started before the COVID and then COVID happened. Sorry. And because of COVID and then the Asian hatred. Uh, so a lot of um, a few unfortunate events happened during this time. And right before she was going to get her green card interview, people broke into her home and then you'll see the end of the film when you watch the film or you might have already watched it <laughs> that's basically the storyline thank you very much and joe a uh, little introduction of yourself and your project yeah uh, my name is joseph Huden. i'm uh, the writer director of usmx and it is a dark sci-fi thriller following a mother and her daughter as they kind of race against the clock to cross the u.s mexican border before sunrise and uh as as they get deeper in the desert, the direction they're running becomes less clear. I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Yes, all uh, thought provoking films, all wonderful films uh, and uh, well executed. Uh, well done, filmmakers. So uh, since um, Raul uh, gave me this idea for a question, what was the inspiration for your connection to the film? Uh, if you're the filmmaker, how did it come about? What was the catalyst to make it? And if you're maybe one of the actors, how do you get approached? How do you get started? And Joe, I'll start with you since we left off with you. Yeah, um, we we started, you know, I, I had a, a, a big team even throughout the development process. Um, me and my producer Liliana started developing it like back in 2016. Um, and I think there was a lot going on. There was uh, an election in America, then there was a Muslim ban, then there was kids in cages and things just continued to um, get more and more heartbreaking and disturbing. And it felt like it was happening so quickly and it was very easy for people to feel hopeless. And I think that a lot of those seeds kind of sparked the original idea for our film of, um, you know, imagining what what the future might look like in a lot of ways um but the biggest goal for it was to really you know by taking the situation and turning it on its head hopefully create empathy in people when they watch it and and um start uh some productive conversations um right and, that's funny yeah. you guys are all you guys are all like leading into my neck the answers to my next oh, question oops. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine but, but i'll cut you off there and i'll go to uh lan because she's next on my grid here and so our film um i met the director like a couple years ago we had a long conversation about him about my real life story so it kind of started there uh, and then last year, we actually shot the film for the Asian Film Festival, Asian American Film Festival. Um, and the theme was going viral. So he liked my story. And then himself, as an Asian American here, you know, he's got his own story. And then COVID happened, and then the new president. So there was a lot of invasion, and including fear how the future could be like. Uh, that's how he uh, put together the story combining my own story. So for me, uh, it was relatable because I am a new immigrant here uh, and how to like the struggle to pursue this 
legal way of staying in the States, you know, for your, your own future, I could totally relate. Uh, I didn't have to, you know, replace any other people's mm -hmm. other characters' uh, yeah. life story. Yeah. You, you, the, I thought your acting was superb. Uh, oh, thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Roald, you next. Yes, well, um, uh, in, in my case, uh, I was brought to the, to the theme by a friend of mine, actually in a, a photographer also making short films. And he was asked by a friend to uh, make a short uh, impression about a humanitarian initiative in the Netherlands uh, called uh, Camp Mora. And it was a civilian initiative to raise public awareness for uh, underaged children uh, that are um, left alone in refugee camps in, in Greece. Uh, no parents, underaged, and uh, the Dutch government promised to bring uh, a lot of them to the Netherlands. The fixed amount was about 500 or so. And uh, up to now, that has not happened. And of course, the, uh, uh, the situation in those camps is not very nice. So it's really a, a tragedy. And last year, the, one of the refugees camps uh, was uh, in a, lost in a big fire. Uh, and still, we are one year later, and those children have still not been uh, taken to, to the Netherlands. They are still not safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why they decided to start a civilian initiative to uh, call upon the politicians to keep their promise. And uh, they're not doing that. And that's why when I said, okay, then let's make an, a movie about this. And I contacted other people uh, to investigate a little bit more into the topic, what is going on there in, in Greece. And I was uh, shocked by it. And um, mm -hmm. I spoke to a Norwegian uh, NGO that is uh, trying to help refugees in Greece, trying to reach land safety. And they sent me uh, footage that uh, both refugees make with their smartphones while at open sea trying to reach the mainland and being shot at and uh, those are shocking images yeah and when i saw that i said well let's 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 do something with this if it doesn't work with uh, um, um, calling upon politicians in the netherlands then we should take it internationally and let's use uh, film festivals and film as another medium to uh, raise public awareness for it Right on. That's how I got to the to the film. Wonderful. I'm glad it's being made. I'm glad you made it. Uh, Numan. Yes. Uh, please. <laughs> right. Uh, well, uh, like uh, like Joe said, uh, uh, their film started in uh, the idea for the film started way back in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, my film also uh, the idea for it started uh, back in 2015. I think uh, you know when. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, my closest friend actually, who's a writer of short stories. Uh, he he wrote a book of short stories, and um, uh, he he would uh, bring his stories to me to discuss them and to uh, uh, sort of elicit my opinion uh, on them uh, in draft form because I also write short stories, but in English. And uh, so uh, we we thought that at some point we'd make a film uh, on on one of the one of the stories which uh, really struck me, uh, uh, which the film is based on. And so um, uh, later when I came to England uh, from Pakistan and I took some film training, uh, I thought I'd uh, put it into practice, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the idea that uh, we, we'd sort of come up with. And uh, uh, that's how it happened. When, when did you film? When did you uh, do production for your movie? Uh, production was uh, about three, uh, I think, three years ago. Okay. Three years. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, and um, uh, Vir Virgie. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. um, so Dreamer, basically, the, the idea of this immigrant story of someone coming to the United States started a while ago. It's loosely based on my mom's immigration story. Mm -hmm. um, and as time has progressed um, and from our previous administration, basically, you know, calling people specifically uh, Latin American immigrants, rapists, criminals, etc., um, and that narrative and kids being pulled away from their parents. 
uh, really just struck a chord with me. And uh, as I started researching stories about DACA recipients and dreamers in this country and how Obama had a good intention with, with giving them some sort of you know, umbrella to kind of try to protect them, it, it's not foolproof. So depending on the administration that we have, they can implement ICE, et cetera, and try to get these people deported uh, for no reasons, even if they have a slight little record something on their record so really that's kind of what the story is about and 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 how it kind of was inspired and also just uh kind of a tongue-in-cheek to kind of hollywood and 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 always kind of portraying latinos a certain way in film right especially latin women so yeah yeah wonderful film um and you know all these films uh kind of touch on several themes or topics, um, not just immigration, if you will, but, um, you know, how we treat each other, how we treat people, um, humanity, the inhumanity, if you will, right? Um, uh, at least these are some of the things that uh, made, you know, the feelings I got that what were, did you guys have um, a desired emotional feeling or reaction that you wanted audiences to get after viewing your film? Like, how did you want an audience to feel or how did you want them to come away after watching your movie? And Virgie, I'll continue with you since we left off of you. Sure, uh, I think for me, I definitely wanted people to want to do something, mm -hmm. uh, whether that was walk away with uh, being a little more educated about dreamers in this country. I think we hear that phrase and we really don't know what that means. And mm -hmm. I don't know how many friends and people that have watched it have come to me from both sides of the table, uh, a bipartisanship way saying, I didn't understand what dreamers were really against, and now I do. Uh, and also, you know, if it pissed people off a little bit about our current state, then great. I yeah, right. So uh, that was for me, kind of. Yeah. You know, the beauty, the beauty of the short film program or short films in a, a block, a, a festival like this, is that you know you get all these different stories and moods, emotions presented to you, and you maybe go for one, or you maybe go open minded, and uh, and you might not like them all, but you get presented with all these different uh, perspectives, which is wonderful. I think about that's and why I, I love shorts. I just want to add to that. I did want to start the conversation, which I'm glad I'm part of Q and A's like this because that was the point. So. Yeah, yeah, right on. Uh, Joe, you're next on my grid, please. Yeah, um, I think, well, I mean, our film's obviously very dark. Um, and I, I think that the idea was, though, I think if there was a takeaway, it was that no matter how dark things get, there's always kind of a flicker of hope. Um, I feel like have to believe that or else things will never get better. Um, and so I think primarily that's kind of the takeaway at the end, primarily in the next generation, um, in the youth. Uh, I think that that's something that, that our whole team finds a lot of, of hope and faith in is, is all the young people in this world doing amazing things. So I think that was tied into the film. Right on. Very good. Uh, Lon, if you go next, please. Uh, so I think our film, we try to make two points. One is, you know, for each immigrant, new immigrant, how you really try hard to make your life. Mm. And then suddenly it just can be taken away so easily, like out of school and all your effort, nobody sees it. And then another part about, you know, this Asian hate before, um, you get hurt for no reason. We just want to be like, this is more of an expression of our film, you know, how we're being treated, what we're going through. And people should see that. And again, treat each other as a human being, as a real human, instead of just, you know, you see the race and then yeah. that's it. And you want to pour out your anger, your whatever, just towards that human being. And of course, we don't want that. Yeah, yeah. It's astonishing how we treat each other. And uh, I hope films and your movies make people start uh, conversations and talk to each other, right? Uh, 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 Raul, you're next, please. Yeah, well, I think you, you, you said it right. It's, it's the same for me as well, that people should be talking about this. And um, uh, I made this because uh, I wanted to help my, my friends that uh, initiated this uh, Camp Mora initiative and also to help the Norwegian NGO because they're doing great work trying to help refugees to, to reach land safely. And um, as there is a little support, a little public awareness for this topic, I thought, well, let, let's make a movie about it. 
and let's make people aware that this is actually happening right now. We're living in 2021. It is unbelievable. And uh, that's why I also used the title, Don't Look Away. Don't look away from this. This is about all of us. This is about humanity. And this is not how we should be treating one another. And I hope that that is something that sticks to people's minds when they see this movie. This really, this should not be happening right now. So, yep, yep. That's my take. Thank you. And Numan. Uh, well, my film uh, is, um, uh, I, I didn't really have a political agenda as such, you know, I'm a, a relatively uh, sort of uh, apolitical person. I, I know it's very difficult to escape politics and, uh, you know, it, it comes into every sphere of life, but uh, it, it uh, my considerations were more creative and I, I was just in love with the story that my, my um, friend had written and I could sort of visualize it, you know, the way I'd I'd present it on screen, and uh, that I think was the primary consideration. But uh, having said that, you know, my film's about the human condition. You know, uh, if you look at the characters in the film, uh, Farzana, Habib, Tom, uh, the three uh, protagonists, uh, uh, they all uh, represent uh, uh, many different uh, things, you know, like. Uh, for, for instance, we all have secrets, we all make faulty choices, we uh, are all constrained by circumstances, and uh, we all think of people we may have loved uh, had our stars aligned differently. Uh, so, uh, or at least a lot of us do. So, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it is about those choices, it's about the struggles, it's, uh, it's, it's about all those emotions, basically. All right. Right. And, you know, um, the, the making of these movies had to be somewhat challenging. Filmmaking is challenging, right? Uh, so if you're trying to uh, create these um, uh, responses in audiences or just trying to create a movie, let's just leave it at that. Uh, it's difficult. We all know. I'm a filmmaker, too. Um, mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's f tell me some of the most challenging parts of making the movie. Uh, Lon. Um, I know you weren't the director, but uh, what, and I, you know, not all of you made it during the lockdown or pandemic, but um, Lon, what was a challenging moment or moments? Mm, I think it was, uh, we were not in the same room. Yeah. Back then, when when yeah, did you make it? When was it made? Uh, last year in June. In June. Okay. Yeah. So that was right at like three months into lockdown. Um, and so what was challenging? Like, what was some of the challenges about that? I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I was yeah. For me, I was just too new of like a camera person, but I had to film myself. Mm. I'm like, is this good enough? You know, I wasn't like confident about my camera skills. Right. So I did a lot of shots and sent all them to uh to Eddie, the director, and then so he was like directing me like after the shot, ah. and then so that's how we made the film. Uh, so it's not like right uh, at the same time, you know, you just give me like feedback right away. So it's not like that. Uh, I think that would be the most challenging part because it's a bit delayed, especially yeah. with another two actors in the end of the film. Uh, so you, would yeah, do a, you would do a retake after you sent the original take and you just there'd be a time delay? Yeah, huh? I mean, like, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so he would see it, you know, like it's not like because you usually you do it at the same time, right. you know, you were acting, the director's watching, yes or no, right? Then you just do another take or not. Right. But they just, okay, I do all my takes that I think might be a good one and then send them to Eddie uh, and then he's going to review it and then send it back. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's just less efficient, but we made it. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, Raul, uh, what were some of the challenges for you in making your movie? Um, well, the, the most difficult thing I thought was uh, decision, the decision making what shots to use. <laughs> uh, because the, the story by itself is, is uh, so tragic. Uh, so how do you compress that in... Uh, something that is short enough so that you can share it in, in a lot of platforms uh, and online and so that a lot of people get to see it because if you have a, a strong message and you want to reach a lot of people not everybody's going to to take a look at a longer film uh, so did our you, challenge did you was say, how did you say sorry for the interruption did you say this is part of a feature film a longer film 
Did no, 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 it's not. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. No, the, uh, uh, of course, we, we discussed that and we, we were discussing what would be the best way to, to do this, to get the message across. And uh, so we wanted to be very short. And uh, so it, ha it has to stick with you. And yeah. uh, that's why we said, okay, let's, let's compress it only to about three minutes and let's call it a mini documentary. Um, but co because of the, the footage, we had plenty of footage. That was not an issue, but uh, how to compress it in such a way that you only get to the, to the core of it. Um, and that, that was a challenge. Yeah. But, uh, and, and the other challenge I had is, of course, that we did it with uh, an, an, um, a real person that is not an actor, not an actress. Right. She was just being herself. And I think that's what makes this, this movie interesting because she is genuine. Uh, it's not fake, it's genuine. This is how she feels and you can see how she feels. And that makes it very powerful. Yeah, I agree. She brings us in to yeah. her lungs. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I, you know, what, what's the, uh, the adage in independent filmmaker movie making, uh, throwing out your babies or, I don't you know, killing your babies, that, that, whether it's a narrative film or a documentary, you got to let go of all these great shots, great scenes that uh, you just don't want to let go of. Um, Joe, I'll go to you. Yours was a narrative film, correct? We have narratives, documentaries mm -hmm. here. Um, so you know that expression, I'm sure. And uh, Oh, some, yeah. Some yeah. things to let go of that, um, you know, I ask this question a lot in the Q&As and, um usually not with documentaries but uh, with narrative filmmakers it's associated with some sort of camera move or dolly move or they're letting they gotta let something go because they couldn't execute it. it was a challenge but anyways i'm talking too much tell me your challenges joe no yeah i mean it, it's very in line with that i think our our film we had no money to make our movie and we were shooting in the desert at night with a miner um in freezing temperatures like it was just it felt like going to war. Like it was, it was very hectic, very stressful logistically. And just like, we had so many people that were excited about the script and, and helping us out and thank God, because without them, we wouldn't have been able to pull any of it off. But, but with those situations, you know, the minor has to be done by a certain time. Everything takes place at night. So you're really kind of rushing from spot to spot. I mean, I was having to uh, you know, I shot, we shot list everything. We storyboarded a lot of stuff. I had to throw that out the window a lot of times. It's like yeah. you have 20 minutes to get one of your longest scenes, like go. And so yeah. I just grabbed my DP and we'd be like, all right, get, you know, just like scrambling to get it. Um, would have to cut scenes because we didn't have enough time in the schedule. Um, Luckily, we you had, you had a willing DP and a willing collaborator. Because uh, another, another a motto you guys probably know, you know, if you're going to make a movie, at least independent filmmaking, um, first time filmmakers, whatever, um, low budget movies, don't have uh, animals, don't have cats or dogs, don't have kids, uh, uh, right? And, um, yep. and no camera moves or no explosions. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah. Had so, all, a lot of those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I was like, why didn't I just write a script about two characters in a, a single room? Um, no, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, those were those were some of the difficulties. Uh, thank you. And then, Virgie, I'll go to you, too. Um, what were some of your challenges? Um, so it's Virgie. No. <laughs> I can't look down. I want to look down and look at my spelling, but Virgie. It's down. okay. It's okay. Um, but make it quick. Um, I think one of the more challenging things was we, a few things, but one of the main ones, we shot it in 12 hours. We shot it in one day at one location, which helped, huh. but there was also still other things. Like I still needed a permit from the police department in Burbank. You know, there was those kinds of things um, that just kind of made it challenging. And there was even shots we didn't even get that I, I wish I could say, oh, we couldn't use that shot. Mm -hmm. We didn't even, we weren't even able to shoot it. So again, the film didn't need it uh, when it came to editing, but I think that that was the biggest a challenge was was just getting everything in in 12 hours yeah wow that's tight <laughs> really tight but we did it but we did it uh new numan how about you uh, yeah uh well i started off with a, an entirely different team of, of of people you know uh so uh maybe uh, owing to my inexperience you know i i just uh, got in touch with the studio here and uh i asked them for technical expertise and uh, so that's how I began the film, you know, with a, uh, with a technical team hired from them. But then uh, things went awry and, uh, uh, you know, we, we had disagreements, creative disagreements. And uh, so uh, all that had to come to an end. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wound up in litigation against them because they'd taken money and uh, 
you know, uh, so all of that. In any case, after all of that was over, uh, I uh, then started from scratch and uh, got another team together. Uh, um, and uh, from there on, it was smooth sailing. You know, then we had uh, no problems and it, uh, we sort of did it in one go. You wouldn't think that was a part of, um, you know, the, the roadblock to the adventure of filmmaking, just it's all creative, but it's not. Um, yeah. um, well, you inspired <laughs> me with another question. Uh, maybe I have a couple more questions for you guys. Um, then I guess I'll just go with this one. What advice would you give a filmmaker? If there's filmmakers watching this, uh, or your uh, colleagues, uh, what kind of advice would you share? And Numan, I'll keep uh, going with you. Uh, I, I'd say, you know, uh, uh, filmmaking is, uh, uh, films are such uh, uh, strange animals, you know, uh, uh, you just have to do them, uh, at least the filming has to be done in one go, you know, uh, you, you just have to get people together and get on with it, you know, mm -hmm. so don't, uh, don't procrastinate, don't, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. you just get on with what you need to get on with, you know, be organized and. Yeah, yep, yeah, true. Uh, Roel, uh, your advice for someone that wants to make a movie or fellow filmmakers. Well, I think most important thing is that if you, if you do have an idea or a story that you definitely want to tell, then, then please do and, and take your camera. And I think it's uh, not as important what kind of camera you use, uh, the, the, how much equipment you have, but it's in, in, in essence, it's your story. That's what it's all about. And you can do it with a smartphone or a DSLR or whatever you have, but please make the film and, and show your creativity. And I think sharing your story is more important than being afraid of not having the right gear or the, the, the right talents. I think if you do have a story that needs to be told, then film it and just do it. Anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as is evident by the different uh, levels of experience here and at the festival. We've got beginner to uh, veterans uh, filmmakers. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, Lan, uh, advice for someone who wants to make a movie or fellow filmmakers? Okay, so I, I may need to act in part. I try to make short films and even write stuff. The, the thing is then after a while, I feel like, oh, what I did was just not good, you mm -hmm. know? So I think really actually get some training, learn, do all your research and watch good films, copy. I think that's, you know, what I am going to do if I'm going to try to make a film next. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you get to do it. You, then, you know, really get to do it. It's going to be, you're going to be in experience and then become experienced. So, yeah. Right on. Very good. Joe, how about you? Yeah, um, I, I feel like especially uh, for for filmmakers who are making some of their first projects, like the most important thing for me was finding people that really believe in you and really believe in the project and really want to be there more so than getting like, you know, the, the splashiest name or anything like that off the back. Like you want, especially on a project that's going to be difficult logistically, like you want the people that are going to be there <laughs> in the middle of the night freezing their butts off with you sure. and, and excited about it you know and because you know it's like filmmaking is like a like a team sport or like a band like it's all about the mentality of everybody involved and everybody pushing it forward together so surround yourself with people that that really believe in it I think is really important true true Virgie yay uh, <laughs> um I think, uh, you know, definitely I agree with, with every, what everybody has said. And yes, everybody has a story to tell. And I say, tell it. I think, um, uh, you know, um, diverse stories is what I feel like I'm seeing a lot of. I, I have seen a lot of like Pakistani Muslim filmmakers coming out. So that's really mm -hmm. interesting because I don't know that world and I'm so right. excited to learn about that world. So that's so interesting to me. And I just feel like um, more diverse filmmakers need to tell their stories. They are interesting stories. We need to see them. So I, I hope that, you know, all of us on the panel inspire people, you know, right. from all backgrounds to tell their yeah. stories. I'm sure you will. And we got to go soon, but you guys are just uh, inspiring with more and more questions. So I'm going longer than I should have uh, because of what you just said, Virgie. I'm going to ask one more question. Uh, well, I'll start with you. I'm going to mix it up, but not in my order here. Um, party message uh, related to your film, to our audiences. Anything you want to say? 
Well, I, I think uh, people should watch short movies and uh, yeah. indie movies around the world because I think there are so many great films with interesting stories uh, to be seen that don't make it to the big screen. And uh, that's why it's so important to, to watch uh, film festivals and other means to look for the brilliant work uh, out there. So please explore. There's so much to see. Right on. Agree. Lon, uh, party message for the audiences related to movies, your film. I hope after people watching the film, you, you want to be part of a kinder world. You know, you want to do good to other people. Maybe I should have ended with you. That's very good. Uh, <laughs> Ron, uh, how about you? Message. Um, I, I'd say that uh, our film uh, uh, became possible only because of the team I had, a mm. wonderful team. Uh, uh, and as uh, uh, everyone pointed out, you know, it's a collaborative uh, 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 thing, you know, making a film. So um, everybody has to play their part and uh, everyone's equally important. Uh, so uh, yeah, watch the film and take from it uh, what you want. Right on. Uh, Joe, parting message for your audiences? Yeah, um, I, well, I guess I'm assuming a lot of the audience are, are filmmakers. Um, and I would just say, like, it's okay to not know how you're going to pull off your project. Um, you're going to learn and adapt and figure it out as you go. And you're going to get thrown tons of obstacles you didn't even know existed. And it's going to be ups and downs. But if you're passionate about it and the people you're with are passionate about it, it's going to work out. And, um, and I'd say with just the film, I mean, for everyone to just like look for places in your life where you can have empathy and even on a film set in, in your life, like just, I think that the world needs more of that. Um, right so. on, right on. And Virgie, I will end with you party message related to your film or your project. I party message is, you know, thank you for having me and <laughs> in your film festival. Um, and, you know, I think just overall, again, just nodding to what everybody has said, um, you know, I'm a storyteller and I, I want to tell stories and I'm glad that everybody has a story to tell and we're telling our stories. I, I, I you know, again, just empathy. Um, my crew that I've worked with, that's been amazing. Um, you know, I think that that's pretty much all it is. We all have outlets now to tell these stories. So I hope to see more. Yeah, right on. Well, you've uh, given me the inspiration to, to thank you, to have uh, gratitude, Virgie. So um, gratitude to all you, to our audiences for watching. Um, filmmakers, congratulations and good luck with um, your future festival run, your future filmmaking careers. Uh, have a good festival and we thank you for um, making your movies. Thank you. Right thank on. you so thank much. You. Hope thank you. To see you. Hope to see you on the film set. Awesome. Yes, it would be great. All right. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao.